This video is brought to you by Miniature Market. Thousands of board games, discounted prices, miniaturemarket.com. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today it's all about dropping the dice and rolling the dice multiple times. Today we're going to be talking about a game called Rollers. This is a dice rolling game for two to five players. It takes about 30 to 40 minutes to play and it's exclusively only at Target right now. So let's take a look. I'll show you how it's played. I'll see you on the other side. At the beginning of Rollers, everyone's going to choose a color. They will get their own board and a bunch of different pieces of cardboard that they will be putting on their board as the game goes on. Everyone's going to start with 10 purple chips that are 5 each and 5 white 1 chips. And here are the different other colors in the game. Red, blue, greenish, and yellowish. What you're trying to do is over the course of the game, this is your score, you're trying to get 5 points. The first one of 5 points wins. On your turn, you're going to take all of the dice and you're going to roll them. And you can re-roll them up to three total times. So as you roll the dice, some of them might be stars and those are wild. So maybe I, I want to keep the star and maybe I want to keep these two ones. And then I will re-roll these again. So I get a second roll. I can keep any ones here that I want. Uh, in this case, let's say I keep a one. Now this black die here is black for a reason. Instead of having a, uh, a star, it has a zap icon. If I roll a zap icon, the, the dice that I rolled that time uh, I cannot keep. So I rolled these and kept them. I can keep those. If I roll a zap, I can't keep these. If it was my third and last roll, I would have been stuck without these dice at all. But I have a third roll. So I'm going to roll all these again. And here and this. Now, what we're going to do is after the third final roll, you stop and you get to use your dice. This you can use for anything. What you're trying to do is what's called opening and closing different numbers. Now this means I need one one to open it. Two twos, three threes, four fours, and five fives. Well, I have a one that I can open it. So I'll take one of these and I'll open it. I also have another one that I can close it. So my number ones are opened and closed. If I had two twos, for example, I would have been able to open that. Now, what this means is once something is open and closed, for every other die for the rest of the game that you roll of this, that other people do not have opened and closed completed, you get to take that much from them. So for example, if I wanted this to be a one, everyone that didn't have a one uh, open and closed would owe me a one chip because I had one die. Now let's say I had my five open and closed, which means on a turn I would have rolled five fives and then on a subsequent turn, or maybe I had this five closed like this. Let's say this was closed and I had this, okay? Now, anyone that doesn't have five open and closed would owe me five plus five, because I'm saying this is a five, 10 chips. Every person would have to pay me 10 chips. And after I've done with my three rolls and I've possibly opened and closed or gotten some money from somebody, it would be the next player's turn and people keep going around clockwise till it gets back to you again. Now, people will take their turns and continue until somebody has opened and closed every number on their board. That would end that round. The player who was the one to do that actually gets two points. Then everybody counts up their chips. Whoever has the most chips basically gets an additional point. So if you have the most chips and you were the one to go out and close out your board, you can score a maximum of three points. Now, if as you're playing, you run out of chips, well, you can't collect chips and you can't pay chips for the rest of the round, but you're not out. You can continue to try to close your board to be the first one out. However, if you do run out of chips completely and uh, you end up uh, going out, being the first one to go out, instead of getting two points, you get one. So you don't want to go out of chips and it's possible to get three points. At this point, let's say I did. I, I closed it out and I had the most chips. I kind of swept around and get three points. Everyone would just completely take their board and clear it, except people's scores. These go from round to round. Now, once this happens, a new round goes on, and you continue doing this until one player has gotten five points, and then the game ends, and that player has one. If more than one player scores five at the same time, then it's the player who has the most chips that will end up winning. Now this game is pretty much a mass market type game where you could be strolling down the, sh the store aisles of Target, run into this game, buy it on a whim, uh, especially people who don't typically play a lot of games, 
and I think they would enjoy it. I think it would remind them a little bit like Yahtzee, uh, but it's probably maybe a little bit more fun than Yahtzee because not only are you rolling for yourself, but you're also trying to fill things up so you can roll those dice and steal the coins from the other players. With that being said, you've got to know that this game does have that sort of take that aspect where you're trying to steal things from other players. Sometimes small children or, or little kids might not like that, so just be aware that that's in this game. With that being said, uh, and with it looking through the lens of it being a mass market type of game, I think it does that pretty well. I think it plays best with two or three players. Three is probably the best. With four, you really start to feel a little bit of downtime going on when it's not your turn. Yes, you're, you can be affected by other people's turns when they're rolling the dice because they might be stealing stuff from you, uh, but it's not as interesting enough where you're going to be totally intent on what they're doing. So with four, it starts to be a little bit uh, downtime too much. Now, with five, I would not recommend this game at all with five, unless you are playing this in a completely casual setting and literally you're just talking and chatting and you know not really paying too much attention as to what's going on the game is sort of secondary then playing it with five players is fine but if you're actually focusing on what's going on uh two or three is my favorite four is okay um but not the best but overall i think it's okay for what it does it's it's got that yahtzee feeling where you're rolling the dice you're trying to get your, your combos together you kind of have you, know, you get those three rolls like yahtzee you've got a little it's a lot of luck uh, but you still have some decisions to make as to what you're going to go for. You know, I've just got my fours down. Am I going to really go for chips this round and solidify my one point? Or am I going to try to close out the board? They're much closer. I might as well just go for chips and get my one point. As the game goes on, you get towards the end, the strategy changes a lot more where, hey, if you've got four points, you only need one more. You can go for nothing but chips that round. But you better watch out because if someone's two points away and they're going for the win, they could take it over from you. Uh, or someone can come and sweep the whole thing and win uh, by getting three points on the last round. So there's some interesting decisions to make for a mass market game. It's not thinky by any means, uh, but I think people that are used to playing games like Yahtzee and things like that will enjoy this one. It's not gonna be one that I'll be pulling out with my, my gamer enthusiast group. There's just not enough there to keep us interested, but for a very light beer and pretzels casual type game, not a bad game, best with two or three, maybe four, five if it's super casual, and that's Rollers. This video was sponsored by Miniature Markets Review Corner. The Review Corner features podcasts, video, and written game reviews by gamers for gamers. Miniature Market, the online gaming superstore. Thousands of board games, discounted prices. Check them out at miniaturemarket.com. I'd like to thank each and every one of you for backing me on Kickstarter and making this season become a reality. I'd like to especially thank those here that have backed me at the credit level. Now, these video reviews are also available by audio on our podcast. It's the intros and the final thoughts on GameboyGeek.com. Click podcast.